This is the introduction for our video series on the Bitwig Studio modulators. This was the real big change, almost a fundamental change to Bitwig Studio from version one to version two. And since this is such a large change, I decided to wait a couple of months before tackling this video series because I wanted a chance to really think about the why and the how, not just maybe go through it immediately and show you, you know, how these things are working. We will do that in the majority of these videos, but I wanted a chance to really sit back and think about this. And that's kind of the point of this introduction video. So we're not going to be going over anything technical here. This is really just a lot of speculation and opinion on my part, sort of a broader perspective. And I'd love for this to be a dialogue. So feel free to uh, write your opinions or questions or comments down in the comment section below. At a glance, the Bitwig modulation system is a universal scheme that works on both internal devices, so things like the PolySynth or the FM4, and also third-party plugins. So you could bring on Zebra, and even though that particular synthesizer has a lot of great modulators, you could combine it with some of the Bitwig modulators if you wanted to do that. And this is similar to Guitar Rig, which is what we have a picture of here, where you can use containers with macro controls and knobs, and you can then sort of route all those things manually to things that you want to have it set up to, a really great system. And also like Max for Live, uh, which I can't really comment on how that works now, but I remember when it was first out, when I was working with Ableton Live, it wasn't the smoothest thing in the world. There were a lot of kind of issues with it. And I have to say that I do believe the Bitwig modulation scheme, at least from my perspective, is, is much smoother. It's really all built into the program and it works as you know you would expect it to work. So what's really changed with Bitwig that sort of set the stage for this or is allowing it to work? Uh, the first is that remote controls replace macros. And you might be thinking, does that have anything at all to do with the modulation scheme? Well, I think it makes a big difference when you think about plugins. And that's why I have the picture here. It's always very annoying to try and draw your depth from those little mini knobs from inside of the plugin window. And so the great thing about remote controls is that you can actually set up all of the controls or all of the major ones on your different remote control pages, which are then much easier to access from the modulators. As you can see, I've set this up here. I have an LFO controlling the mix balance, but I've done that at the remote control level as compared to going in and trying to scroll and find uh, the parameter from inside of the view or having to click it and have that the top thing. I don't know, for me, this is why I think they've brought in remote controls because you can set those up with third-party plugins nice and quick. You can set your depths, bing, bang, boom, you're good to go. Uh, the other thing that's changed, and this is something that you can, of course, re-bring up, is that the LFO mod, the audio mod, and the note mod, they have been replaced with modulators, but you can still access them if you need to by going into the uh, browser and then right-clicking and choosing Include Legacy Devices. So this is the only time I'm going to mention that in this series of videos. And if you are not already aware of that, that is where it's at. I also covered that in my more generic What's New in Bitwig Studio 2 video. In terms of application and maybe who is really going to get a lot out of this new scheme, I would say that producers of electronic and experimental music are going to be very happy. I've read a lot recently online that Bitwig is really catering and tailoring to EDM producers, and I don't think that's necessarily true. There's not many styles of EDM where you're going to be modulating other modulators and just coming up with these super wacky, crazy results. That's more for electronic music and, you know, just like experimental music in general. And I think those are the sort of people who are going to get a lot out of this. Also, if you're a producer who uses a lot of virtual instruments and effects, this works out great for you. If you're mostly working with audio, um, you know, not a whole lot there. So you have to know sort of what your strength is and how you make music. Some people 
who really love Bitwig may not really take advantage of the modulation scheme, and that is totally fine. But one thing that is great about it is that it's incredibly smooth, efficient, and it encourages experimentation because it's really easy to set up and it's really easy to delete or sort of uh, disassemble if you need to do that. And that follows along with, I think, a principle that Bitwig has actually done really well, which is really keeping that workflow um, as seamless as possible. And so there may not be a million options out there for you when you get into the menus and customization, but it does keep you focused on the task at hand. And I think with this new modulation scheme, that's still the case. In fact, in some ways, it's even smoother than how things were set up before. And that's maybe the greatest strength of it at all is that, you know, I wouldn't want to be working with something that's super confusing. I don't want to have to spend two hours explaining to you guys how this is going to work and all of the possibilities. You figure those out on your own, and that's why it lends itself to to experimentation so much. And with our final slide, I thought I would talk a little bit about the future. And this is like sheer conjecture on my part. But I would imagine that with this new modulation scheme, what you really need in the program moving forward is going to be more stuff to modulate. So amping up and adding more features to the effects and also to the instruments. And that seems like that is a direction they're headed in with this next update coming up. They're supposedly going to be adding in an amp. We just saw that the tree monster was introduced, something that is a lot of fun to get in there and modulate. So now it's just a matter of, you know, let's say with the chorus, for example, wouldn't it be great to have more of like a Dimension D style chorus where you have like four or five different algorithms but instead of them being from buttons it's like a slider and so you could slide between those different things and modulate there um, you know all of those are sorts of things that now with this new modulation scheme I really want to see and where I would think they would kind of head the direction of the program in what good is tons of modulation options if you have nowhere to use them and you need to start with your internal stuff because still working with the plugins it can be kind of frustrating not everything is going to move smoothly. You may get some errors, not on the fault of Bitwig, but just on that plugin itself. So I think that the future of this program, and this is so funny because now it's almost like moving a different direction to what I may have said six months ago, but I think now what needs to be added is just more stuff to modulate. So either, again, adding more features to the existing effects, adding new effects, you know, both of those things and instruments as well. And I also think that maybe this means that that unified modulation system, that reactor style of being able to go in and sort of like manually patch things together. Uh, personally now, I would prefer them to just drop that entirely because it kind of goes against what I was saying before with the smoother workflow. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that and don't get me wrong, I would love it if it was in there, but, and this is kind of a big but, that takes a lot of time. If you've ever programmed things in Reactor, it's not something that you do in like five minutes and you suddenly have a great result. Um, it can take a lot of time, a lot of patience. And so I'd rather have a lot more effects and instruments to work with like right off uh, the cuff instead of having access to, you know, going inside the panel and making modifications to these instruments. While I would love that at some point, right now I don't think that should be really a priority um, and this is where I'd love to get your guys' take and some of your opinions on these things. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Moving forward, we're going to go through all of these different modulators, go through some examples, talk about how they work. And like always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. So I hope that you stick with me through the remainder of the series. But of course, you're able to just skip around and pick the things that you're most interested in. Thanks a lot and take care.